Blake joining me a little bit later on as well. Blake are great. I I first saw them do something, I think, at, um, at Shirley Bass's 70th birthday party at Clifton, just down the road. And they were very, very good. And Shirley on stage there with them said, boys, give me your room keys. Because she can get away with that kind of stuff. Uh, and they were very, very good. So hopefully, I don't know, they're going to sing live. Uh, I assumed uh, they were going to be in London somewhere talking stuff, but apparently not. Uh, they're coming in. Uh, they're going to be performing very, very soon in Newbury. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where, but we will find out. Uh, talking about various things today on the Midweek Man with Dr. Steve Allen, retired dinner, the very last show of all. We were thinking... Uh, about, I don't really have time to do it now. Uh, we're thinking about uh, doing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire uh, instead of 20 Questions. Now, I don't think it's time to do it, uh, really, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe uh, the Blake boys will want to answer questions on something. I can write them something in Stanta. Right. BBC Radio Bosch, uh, eight minutes after three. It's a time. Welcome, Stephen and Humphrey and Ollie. How are you doing? Very good. Well, very, good. very, yeah. very good. Very nice, good. Nice Great. to be here. Well, yeah, it's nice to be anywhere, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anywhere that's dry, uh, anywhere that's preferably. So it's great yeah. that you actually made it down to the studio. Very good. Uh, the, the nearest um, uh, that I, I was in the room to you guys was... Uh, uh, just down the road here at Clifton, Shirley Bass's 70th birthday uh, when you performed on stage with her. That yes, was, yeah, that was, was very, very... Uh, asked for your room keys, as I remember. <laughs> she did ask for room keys. And, <laughs> and, uh, well, I never got to find out whether well, any of you actually got one of them. coughed up. You know? well, I she think, she you know, did get one. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> what, what goes on tour stays on tour. I yeah, think, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, how, was, how was your yeah. night with Shirley? It was, it was, it was magnificent. <laughs> was um, it? Yeah. I still haven't quite recovered, but it was good fun. Yeah, yeah. a memory that will stay with you forever, like diamonds, no doubt. Indeed. Brilliant. Now, you guys are you're at Newbury next weekend, is it? <coughs> uh, yeah, it's yeah. It's 20, I think, 27th. Oh, so oh, yeah. 27th. Is that right? Yeah, right. Like that. Good, good, good research, research, guys. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're really playing the Corn Exchange or something? <laughs> That's right. We are indeed. We are. Yeah. One of Glenn Miller's last ever gigs, the Corn Exchange. Was it? Really? Yeah, it was. Actually, sure I think it's, to get I think it's a big aircraft. anniversary uh, uh, thing there soon. I mean, yeah, it must be. Yeah, so I'll check it out before you do it because there might be. Well, that's a good factoid for Yeah, it is a good one, yeah. But yeah, no, it's going to be—it's going to be great. We're taking our—it's a show that we do around around the UK. So it's, uh -huh. a, it's a two-hour show, and and it's uh, uh, it covers all the sort of stuff that we do. So we take the three-part harmony and we mix classical and pop and uh, some original songs as well. And um, yeah, it's, it's a roller coaster of emotion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with, with a bit of verbal. I mean, people always—they they like it. I mean, I've seen so many people that don't actually engage with the audience they yeah. go on they do it I, I you know you don't want to name names brian ferry but um <laughs> I, I, I went to a gig who's going in. he did the songs he looked immaculate i mean he that looked fantastic he delivered didn't talk to the audience once right. so nobody really felt connected yeah. if you think that's bad we just came back from we did some performances out in new york a couple of weeks ago and whilst we were there we performed at the carlisle in uh, in new york which is an cafe incredible carlisle. cafe yeah. carlisle amazing place yeah. it's where woody allen performs every monday and we performed straight after him but Humphrey and I decided to watch a bit of his show. He takes it to extremes because he won't even look at the audience. He looks at the floor during the entire performance. Really? He doesn't uh, speak to them once. He's, it's just because he's very, very, very shy. Um, so we're at the opposite end of the spectrum. He's doing what he's doing. Exactly. <laughs> I think he, he loves playing. And yeah. uh, I think the thrill of having an audience in front of you is the same for mm. him as for anybody else. We love having an audience in front of us. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, for us, I think the, the interaction element is one of the most important parts of the show. And, I, and certainly when we speak to people who, who like our sort of genre of music and like other groups, um, it, I think it's one of the things that distinguishes us is the fact that we have a lot of interaction with the audience yeah, and there's quite yeah. a lot of off-the-cuff mm -hmm. chat and we don't take, take ourselves too seriously. So. And, and you I mean, your person, I'm saying this loosely, your personal intelligent guy is very loosely, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> um, but, I mean, you're, you're, you're not dark. I mean, some people on stage, they're not quite sure what to say. They can sing the songs. Uh, but I think that's, sure. again, that, that is experience. And I'm not suggesting we're more experienced than bands that have been out there a long time but actually we've been doing it this way for since we started so seven yeah. years so I, I guess probably at the beginning we weren't you know we weren't going to be excellent at it the banter was probably hit and miss sometimes well, when, I know, when I know we it was out, we used to write lines down on a sheet of paper <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of uh, exactly. and, and it was a kind of process of elimination it doesn't work which lines work yeah. well and then year after year as you try different bits of banter yeah. you work out which ones work and you learn yeah. what's right for different audiences around the country as yeah. well because it's such a you know there's such a diverse mix of people yeah. in in Britain. I mean, the, the you South, mean like not not singing Jerusalem in Wales like we did. The we, other yeah, week. we we yeah. sang in Carnegie the other day. We sang Jerusalem, 
at the end. It was we had to we had to really warm them into that. Um, yeah, well, that's we, we probably won't convince actually. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, give us Man of Arlac. <laughs> we got a few wet we, sheep. We got away with, with it yeah. by um, replacing the word England with Swansea or Cardiff <laughs> at various times, and then they seem to go with it a lot more. I don't know why, but, yeah, but then we all forgot the words. Yeah, a little bit. Swansea's kind of... green and pleasant there, and I couldn't remember what came next. No, it's very <laughs> difficult when you change anything. But no, we, we're always very aware that our audience is a, a mixture of couples and and lots of single ladies that come along as well. Yeah, yeah. So we often have to put the men at ease quite early on, and that's where the comedy really started coming into the show because we suddenly realised these guys have been brought along kicking, screaming, not wanting to be there at all. Um, we're going to be singing a lot of love songs during the night, and some of them are rock and contemporary yeah. and pop, yeah. but ultimately it is something for ladies, so the comedy's there for the guys, really. Yeah, no, I think you need to do that, and it's easy with three of you. You can, uh, as, as George Michael always said about Andrew originally, I went in there to bounce off on stage, yeah, you know. True. Uh, otherwise, I feel really exposed. Yeah. If it's just you, you really think about what you're saying. If something goes quiet, then you're stuck. Well, you can turn yeah. to one of the other guys and go, well, you didn't like that, did they? <clears throat> so you, you can bounce off each that's other. That's very true. Yeah, you can't be off the cuff with just yourself. You need, yeah. you need each other to set mm -hmm. things up, even by accident. And that, and that relation, or the relationship between us is definitely something that, that fans and people who come to the concert enjoy. They enjoy yeah. seeing our relationship yeah. as three friends and three performers, and, and, uh, and that certainly mm -hmm. comes across. So, yeah, it's cool. Do you go for specific roles, I, when you're yeah. chatting? Like, one's the brainy one, one's the sporty one, one's the fall guy, or anything? Or do you just sort of mix really. and match? Really? I mean, it's just around at different times. I mean, it's depends who's in what mood. The chat's a it? combination yeah. of anecdotes in the group, which we've experienced over the last seven years, and, and personal anecdotes. You know, yeah. some of our relationships have been brilliant, some of them have been terrible. Um, <laughs> and the, great, the greatest therapy you can have is to talk to 600 people live on stage <laughs> when things go wrong in your life. Um, so I think that the th main thing we're comfortable to d with doing is being self-deprecating we always have been we don't worry about making fools of ourselves yeah and whenever you step on a stage if you've got that in your arsenal of tricks you're in a good position i think generally Absolutely. i find the easiest technique is just to give them stephen's uh, hotel room number yeah that's, and that, that, that puts an audience at ease pretty quickly yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. i retaliate with his mobile number though so it's fine it's all, it's all fair and make sure you disappear at the end of the night that's the time to do it <laughs> that's quite, sorry is that the time yeah <laughs> Well, actually, well, we, always, we always see everybody at the end afterwards because we've always, uh, something we learnt from um, some very old school, you know, old, old guard members of the entertainment industry was to, to do sort of signings and sit down, meet and greets yeah. after every show. So we do that every night and it takes about an hour. So we've done our show and then we go and sit there and we sign CDs and programmes or pretty much yeah. anything they give us, actually. It was a um, BBC <laughs> ethos as well. After the Radio One road shows, you used yeah. to do that. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, uh, and, and they Johnny Billy and say, right, don't think you're going anywhere. What? You're going to yeah, go over yeah. to the, the van there. You're going to sit there. And we'd sign and sign and sign and sign and sign. And, you know, until there was one dog left. <laughs> and everyone, the, the 15,000 yeah. people that uh, you wanted to rush off in a car and whisk away. Everyone had gone, and there's paper, blow tumbleweeds going. Well, through, just the, the, <laughs> mass, the massive downside to this process, having signed so many things, if you actually want to find one of our albums on eBay, the trick is finding one that isn't signed. Yeah, it's that's say, the problem. It's so yeah. much mostly it's, devalued and defaced. Yeah. Absolutely, um, but that's fun. We, lo we love meeting audiences. It's what's, what it's all about. Yeah, really. yeah. and yeah, also you get off stage yeah. and you're on a big high. It's nice to be able to do something with it. Otherwise, yeah. as you say, you get in the car and you end up driving too fast or something. So you know, it's good to actually be able to share that high with the people yeah. who've just watched you. And, and again, for them to get more of a chance to, to know you as an individual. I think that's the way, you know, it used to be the, the star treatment of, you know, oh, they're, they're up there, we can't touch them, we don't know them. Mm. But I think these days, especially with social media and social platforms, you know, you get your followers and, and, and the people that will come and see you again and again because they feel they know you mm. and you think, oh, there's, you know, and Cliff always used to say, I always know the first four rows, you know, <laughs> I, I can see, I know them almost by name, the first four rows. Yeah. So yeah, it's I very true. We, the same. We, we, we do have people that. that will always come. Oh, yeah, we've well, got people that come to a lot of gigs. I yeah. mean, like a lot, and we sort of we sort of sit there thinking, God, what have you spent this year? You know, do, do you have something else you you want to go and do? I mean, you don't want to say, please don't come. You're very happy to see them, but uh, yeah. but some people are extraordinary the way they they, you know, that they follow you around. Yeah. It's very touching. Good stuff. We'll talk more in a moment with Ollie and Humphrey and Stephen Bleak. It's seventeen <laughs> minutes after three. BBC Radio Berkshire. Stephen Humphrey and Ollie with me. Blake, 20 past three is the time. I'm going to play one of their tracks in a moment. 26 
uh, Newbury Corn Exchange. We find don't go on the 27th because you'll be massively disappointed. Unless, of course, somebody good on yeah. on the 27th, <laughs> in which case you won't be disappointed. Uh, you, you guys do so much for, for different charities. They've recently been uh, working with Walking with Wounded. Yep. Um, you, you do an awful lot. I mean, were you on the Cadet Corps or something? Well, you sort of, I think you know, we probably all were. We all were. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it comes from uh, friend, friends and family. It comes yeah. from genuine links to yeah. the to the services and, and having had friends who have been terribly, terribly injured. And yeah. uh, so it's a, it's a cause that's very dear to our hearts. And uh, when you're in a position to be able to help, then I, you know, I think you should. So it's, yeah. it's something that is very dear to us. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of the singles you put out, is it's got a, some, a charity attachment. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, you've been around for a while. It's good to do, you yeah. know, one or two a year. And actually, you end up suddenly doing quite a lot. I mean, uh, we did, we've done various things for cancer charities and a lot of forces charities and Prince's Trust and things like that just in the last mm. few months. Mm. Uh, so uh, if we add them up, we've, yeah, yeah I think we've done a, lo a lot of charity work, but we, we do... You know, we do enjoy doing it. The industry's it's nice. changed an yeah, awful it's, lot. Exactly. You know? It's good to have, yeah. you know, it's really, it's finding a vehicle for each song or finding a song that you think will help a charity that you care about to, to do a better job with, with what it's doing yeah. or, or, or you can help in some way. You know? No, I mean, the I mean, we get between 50 and 100 <coughs> charities each month sending various emails through saying, can we do this, can we do that? Mm. And for us, it's really trying to, trying to find something that means something to us to be involved. Otherwise, yeah. it's very hard to pick yeah. and choose. No, it's good. Rock and roll used to be a sort of debauched lifestyle of parties and a non-stop whirly gig, and now we're, we're all doing a uh, wonderful charitable thing. Well, you'd, <laughs> you'd know. You yeah. missed it. Yeah. Clearly, on the good year. So <laughs> way too late. You, you had it for us. Like yeah. uh, you did Trafalgar Square recently for uh, Prince Harry's sort of poll uh, expedition. That's right. I mean, yeah. uh, again, he's a remarkable character. We were talking earlier about uh, the royals suggesting that uh, uh, Kate make her image less young, you know, more regal. Mm. Uh, I, I would, think... Yeah. That we were saying, I think she's, she and William did a fantastic job. Yeah. Uh, and considering all they've been through, William and Harry turned out brilliantly. Uh, mm -hmm. I think really, really good, both in the armed forces. And and, and Harry just thinking, well, let's just pop down on the pole for a while. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? The he first royals go to a pole. He is Amazing. exceptional. I mean, yeah. we spoke to him on the, when, we, when they had the launch and we sang the song and, um, and we, we had a chat with him about it. And... Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. He puts himself absolutely, you know, in the mix. And yeah. we said, you know, are you looking forward to it? Do you want to go? And he said, well, no, not really. It's, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and he had a sore toe and he was... Uh, broken toe. A yeah. broken toe. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's um, there's no gimmick to it. He, he absolutely gets in the mix and yeah. puts himself through some amazing things because it's something that is very, very dear to him. And, you know... That's right. I think having been, been on the front line and... Exactly. I mean, you think, you, you think you get sent a lot of suggestions for different charities, but think how many they must get. Oh, yeah. You know, we were talking to, to his PR lot, and they were saying that, you know, they do. They just have to wade through them. And literally, yeah. it's just a question of what they particularly, as individuals, feel that they wish to give their time mm. to, you know, once, yeah. twice a year, whatever whatever it may be. Otherwise, there's nothing left. I mean, they can't do... Yeah. They cannot do everything. But we know. should say, we did a we did the song uh, To The Sun, um, which I believe they all listened to as they walked along, um, which is which is out there. So if people are interested, it's called To The Sun, and every penny of it goes to Walking With The Wounded, which is a fantastic charity. So yeah. if they want to look it up online, it's uh, all there, and every penny will make a big difference. It's, actually, there's, it's, worth, it's one of those ones worth going to YouTube to look up because there's a video that accompanies the song which actually shows wounded servicemen climbing mountains which is incredible people without arms or without yep. a leg climbing the side of a mountain yep. which I wouldn't even dream of they trying are to extraordinary make. I mean the last last couple of years <coughs> I've uh, co-hosted the Soldiering On Awards uh, oh, and yes. again those guys and you think you're doing something, you know, you've only got one leg or, or yeah. one arm and one leg. And, you know, you, you, you've been at Selly Oak, you've been at Headley Court, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and you're doing things that I would never dream of doing. Oh, they're, yeah. so, they're, so, they're so positive. Uh, we were chatting to one of the American guys who's, who's got one, only got one finger left on his right hand. Uh, and he's just, you know, he was joking, <coughs> saying, well, you know, at least there's less to get frostbite on, you know, and, yeah. they're, and they're all joking about having their, yeah. their yeah. disabilities. But it's all about, it's about having an aim as well, isn't it? Mm. Because they have to have something to look forward to. I mean, I, I had a friend who went into, into Sally Oak and Headley Court who was blown up in, in, in Afghan a few years ago now. And, uh, and it is, it's about some, having something at the end of the journey that they can actually look forward to and say, that's what I'm going to do. That's the reason I want to be able to get better. Because yeah. otherwise, it's just, you know, there isn't a huge prospect for, for what they can do. That's right. And with, with a lot of them, they think they're going to get back out mm. there, a chub of yeah. mind. So, can't wait to get back out. Well, you're probably not, but they might let you think that for all. Yeah. We'll chat more in a moment with Stephen and Humphrey and Ollie uh, Blake, who are coming to the Newbury Corn Exchange on the 26th, 25 past three.